And even as one is going, one is coming. And even as Paul said, whether I live or whether I die, is I'm the Lord. Or I belong to the Lord. We see it in that way. So uh, we have much to rejoice for. We have much to thank God for. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for taking care of us, Lord, and for blessing us, Lord, throughout the day, throughout the week. And even this morning, we're here one more time in your name. We thank you for everything, Lord, that you are doing and everything you have done and everything that you'll do. Today we come, Lord, anticipating, Lord, for a great blessing. Financial blessing, physical, spiritual, material. But, Lord, first, the spiritual blessing, because everything that we mention that is not spiritual is carnal, and it lasts just for a little while. But the spiritual one remains forever. And that's the one we need the most. So, Father, help us this morning. Speak for me and for me. And help everyone to hear your word and to take in your word and to believe. Bless every soul, every spirit this morning. Every one of God that love you and will come to you. Father, you said, uh, but Jesus said, no one will come to me unless the Father draw him. But then, uh, if when the Lord call, one must believe in order to to be drawn, because the Lord will not force anyone or force himself on anyone. So Father, help us to tell the story that they'll hear. For the Bible said, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So Father, help us to take your word seriously and go out and tell it. I ask all in Jesus' name and for thy sake, amen and amen. amen. Now, brethren, we're here one more time. We're here one more time praising God and magnifying his name. We are here for a purpose. And the purpose is to serve God. Now some would use that term. I am here purposely. Now we can use the word. I have done it purposely. Or I am here for a purpose. We both spell the same way. But different meaning. Amen. So one can say I do it purposely. I was called for a purpose. I'm here on purpose. All are the same word. But with a different meaning. Now we are here. On a purpose. For the Lord. Or we are here on a mission for God. Or for a purpose, something specific for God. We just didn't come here just like that because we are special people. Amen. The Lord called us for a special purpose and to serve Him. Now, last week uh, we spoke, as I said, we're still in the book of John. We read down to uh, 31 of John. Chapter 7. And this morning we're going to take from 31 and go down. We didn't do much reading or a lot of explanation. But today we have a few verses. What we had from last week. We didn't really read all of them. Or did explain them. But then what I really want us to really look at seriously and emphasize on it is uh, those that believe. Because in 31 said, many of the multitude believe in him. And they were saying, when the Christ shall come, he will not perform more signs or miracles than those of which this man as will he? Now we're going to look at those verses and read them, and I have some uh, different verses, which is uh, reference verses. We're going to also look at them. Now, the Bible tells us that many 
of the multitude believe? It's, it, today we're going to ask some questions uh, and look at certain things. As I said last week, I think I did say that last week, there are around 15 uh, Bible verses or references where a man should try or we should try the spirit. 15 verses in the Bible where we should try the spirit. Because uh, what I said last week, the way the people spoke, like they were looking for to Jesus. But there is only one. And I said last week, if you remember well, I said even today, the Jews still looking for another Jesus. Or for the real Jesus, because they think the real Jesus has not come. But as I said, the real Jesus, he came to seek and to save those that are lost and those that were lost. Because Jesus or God is always present. But it is something in the past where a lot of people believe while he was here on earth in the flesh. Many believe on him and many remain believing on him while many did not believe though they believe they know that he had to come because Moses told them that he had to come. We're going to read some scripture verses this morning, a few of them. We should try the spirit and aware we should seek the Lord while it is early. So this morning, uh, I'm going to have us to do some reading. Pray God that we are ready to do that. Now, uh, as I said, a lot of people were looking for another Jesus because they address Jesus as a man, just as a person, ordinary person. But some never realized and know he was Jesus, the one that had to come. Some believe, and some also believe with doubt, but some believe down in their heart it was the real Christ. Because we'll see it as we read those verses uh, when he was living, because he said, I'm going. And uh, the little time I have with you is about short, but uh, I'm just here a few time with you, and I will leave. Okay. Uh, as I said, some people refer to two Jesus. So then I said, there is one and know the right one. We need to know the right Jesus for many people. To say, know the right Jesus is to try the spirit. According to the Bible, to know the right Jesus is to try the spirit. To know which is the right one. For not only that one that they mention that they expect to come, or the one that's already here, but there are many Jesus today in the world, even people calling their children Jesus. Yeah, I can mind. Especially, especially the Hispanic people. They love to call their children Jesus. Jesus means Jesus. Plenty of them, plenty. I work with some, I know some, and they call the children's name Jesus. But it's not the Jesus that we know. He's an ordinary man. So that's why you have to try the spirit. Because some people, somebody will come and say, Oh, I am Jesus. And if someone don't understand, he'll fall for that. But it's not the Christ. Not the Son of the living God. It's one that is in the flesh. Or a carnal one. One is not, one is a, is a, a, a naturally human. We have some verses. I, I would like us to look at John chapter 1. John chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. Uh, if we have, could have that mic close to us, so because we're going to do a, a lot of reading, a few reading. So, uh, if the, or the mic is all right, Brother Craig, and that it could, it's already in the board, but they would need the mic. Anybody had a mic? Read it. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptize more disciples than John. 
though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. <clears throat> he left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. <clears throat> then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary with this journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. <coughs> okay, just read one more verse. Seven. Seven. Therefore cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water, Jesus saw unto her, Jesus saith unto her, give me to drink. Okay, probably I should take another verse again. Something I'm looking for there. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that you being a Jew Ask drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If you knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, you would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Okay, okay. We can still continue going, but I want us to stop here. But actually, the references, uh, they show us there was in a, just now, which journey are from? Okay, so probably that's not it. <laughs> that's why I'm saying, it's First John, sorry. Oh, first. first John 4, 1 to 6. I was wondering, I was wondering. First John, Brother Creek, sorry. First John 4, 1 to 6. Talking about to try the spirit. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Continue. Oh. Going to six. Mm -hmm. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Okay, that's the verse. That's the first, because I, 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 the reading, <laughs> something was wrong, but uh, that's why the Lord tell us to try the spirit. Now we have more verses. As I said, there are 15 verses in the Bible talk about uh, trying the spirit. But then I just pick out just a couple of them or a few of them. We have another one, which is taken from John, which is St. John, the first John we had on the board. John chapter 3, verses 24 to 36. This time, not first John, it's only St. John, or the Apostle John. John 3, 24. Anybody have it? Read if it's not on the board yet. Okay, it's right on the board now. For John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom you bearest witness, behold, 
the same baptizes, and all men come to him. John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. You want, where do you want me to stop? Yeah, go ahead until, what would I say? Until he, our... He that cometh from... Ab- go continue reading, 36. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. For he... 36. I'm going where? To 36. 36. Get to 36. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given him all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Amen. Now, we have one more verse which is in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 36. Uh, That's that's a tip from Paul. Paul also gives us that one. But what what I'm really trying to do this morning is for us to try the spirit. Jesus proved himself that he was a Christ. One that is not the Christ who speak that way. But first he tells us to try the spirit. Because one that confess that Jesus is Jesus come in the flesh is of God. Now we're talking about the false prophets or the false teachers or the people that go out and say who Jesus is. But he said to know that the people know who Jesus really is, they must confess that he come in the flesh. Jesus did come in the flesh. Remember in Hebrews when he said uh, you have prepared a body for me. In Hebrews, we, in, in our lesson, we talk about that. Jesus could not come in the spirit to deal with flesh. Do we get that? He could not come in the spirit to deal with flesh, to convert flesh, to communicate with flesh. He had to come in the flesh. Though he's a spirit, when he spoke to that woman of Samaria, he said, they that worship God must worship him in the spirit and truth, because God is a spirit. Jesus is also a spirit. We are spirit, and we are flesh. Let's get it clear. We have to know who we are. As I always remind us, we are tripartite. We body, soul, and spirit. But we are mortal here on earth. Jesus was immortal here on earth. Get that clear. Because his father is from above. Which is immortal. Right? That's why uh, the angel had to tell Mary. That thing that is in you is of the Holy Spirit. Or not only that, the Bible said that the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and she become pregnant. Now, that has to do with the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That refers to Jesus. All things were made by Him, and nothing that made would not have made without Him. 
So Jesus is the word. The word made flesh and dwell among men. How the word could have made flesh and the word is a spirit. The word is spirit. But that word enter Mary when the angel spoke and she agreed. Do we understand that? When she agreed to accept Jesus or the carrier of Jesus because she prayed long that God, that God would send a deliverer. She was one of the women that prayed that God would send a deliverer to deliver Israel from under bondage. And she was accepted because she believed or she, and she accepted uh, the invitation. She, accept, she expected the uh, invitation when uh, the, the angel said that uh, you shall have a son and his name shall be Jesus. And she was wondering, but how can I make have a son? I have not interfered with no man. I'm a virgin, so to speak. She didn't fully understand. But the angel explained to her how it will happen. Do we get that? How it will happen. And she will get pregnant. Now, some people said, I think we, we, had, we heard it here too. But somebody said that long ago, many years, probably over 50 years, a uh, pastor, an American pastor, one that used to uh, preach in my church and help us, and he said the very sperm of the Holy Spirit enter Mary and she become pregnant. That is not true. That is not true. That if we study the Bible, he said the way you come is not of flesh or not of blood or the will of man, but of God. If it had to happen that way, then Jesus would be a natural human being that cannot save nobody because he would have sinned. Do we get that? Yes, yes, Pastor. No. Because he was of the spirit, it made all the difference in the world. Because he had uh, the spirit and he had the knowledge that others did not have. And so he made such an impact on the circumstances because he was speaking from heaven and not just earthly speak, right? Is that right? That's right. Okay. More than right. <laughs> you are speaking heavenly things. Yeah. Because remember he said, if I speak earthly thing and you cannot understand and don't believe me, how will you understand heavenly thing? Right. You have to understand earthly thing in order to be able to understand heavenly thing. Because most times Jesus speak in a manner for us to understand. He speak heavenly things, earthly things to explain heavenly meaning. So that's why he had to come in that form when he came. He came down, he left heaven, not flesh. He left heaven, spirit. But then he entered Mary as a baby, as the word, the word. <laughs> I'm thinking, I may be wrong, but I'm thinking that you just made the statement that Mary had been praying, you know, for Jesus, for for the, you know, to come, the Messiah to, yes. you know, to come and everything. So when the Spirit of God spoke to Mary, 
I'm sitting here thinking, it seems like it was easier for her to receive, uh, you know, what the Spirit of God said to her because she had been praying for it and she was looking for it to happen. That's true. But not necessarily through her, but when the invitation was given, she, she, uh, was, she yeah, was ready yeah. to receive it. That's right. Where does it say in the Bible that Mary was praying and asking God? I mean, I'd like to read that. Yeah, I, I'll have to look it up for you, but she was one of the women. One of the women praying. Yeah. She was one of the women that was praying. Now you can, you can, you can get it very easy, Brother Craig. Just take your, just take your phone and ask Google. Instead, I have to go look for it for you. Ask Google where, and she'll get you right there. I'm not sure if it's in the Old Testament or the New, but I, I read it. But many times, a lot of things, a lot of things I read, a whole portion of the Bible, but not, not everything I remember. So when I go to study and I want to pull up something and I cannot remember where it is, I just call that lady, Google, <laughs> and I ask her the question, and she'll give to me not one, not only what I ask her, but many scripture verses to prove. So that's why when I stand before you, I know what I'm talking about, because uh, when I get it, then I go back in the Bible to see if it is true. I read it, and I confirm it, and then I stand here. Not only that. As I, I, I used to study from my big dictionary, which is seven language dictionary. But then, it's a lot of reading I had to do. So then I had to really ask Google for a lot of help. And that's where I get a lot of help. But uh, we already 45. The time has come so quick. And uh, so we had to stop there. We had a subject because we have a lot of questions because I study way down, way down to, to uh, 36 and then, but we had to stop now. So next week, if the Lord say the same, we will 